this is Caitlin with KMK Designs. I'm here today to show you how to draft a corset from scratch. This means if you don't already have a pattern or you want to create something completely new or a silhouette you haven't seen, this is a tutorial for you. A little heads up, I did try to make this tutorial as easy as possible to follow, but it will be a lot easier if you already have experience in making a corset or have made a few corsets or in pattern drafting itself. This video mixes things that I learned for my education going for fashion as well as things I've learned over the years making corsets as a profession. So there's some tips and tricks in here that you wouldn't necessarily just pick up from hopefully a normal tutorial or normal school and hopefully will give you a lot more insight in the way that a corset pattern works and functions with different body types and different silhouettes. That being said, I do find that I'm a bit more of an organic patterner than some, so while this method might be great for some people, others it might not be the right method for them, and know that for making clothing especially, there is so many different ways to do it, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong way, and these are the methods I've found that have worked for me. Alright, some things you're going to need is first a dress form or mannequin or a person who's willing to stand there roughly about your size. It's better if you can have exactly your size, but it's really not realistic most of the time. I would say even in my profession, I never have something exactly the right size, so I just draft to what I have as closest, do alterations later. You're always going to have to make a mock-up to test out a corset anyway, so I find that just at this point, just having a body to draw lines on is the best fit. Next, you're going to want something to mark your seam lines and your style lines. So this can be a marker if you're okay drawing on your dress form. This can be like a quilter's marker that washes away with water or an iron. Or this can be something like styling tape, which they sell for this particular purpose. Or just string that's put in with pins. It just needs to be thin. It needs to be movable and malleable so that you can make your lines for your corset and get the outline of what you want to create. Another good thing, but not necessary, if it's your first time starting, it might be a good idea to have some photo references. For this example, I actually had a client send me necklines of some fashion corsets that she liked, so I drew the necklines on there. And you can also do that with something similar, like if you have a corset that doesn't cinch a lot, but you really like the style of the neckline, you can hold it up against your dress form just to outline that neckline and get that for your more cinchy corset. You will also need some plain muslin in a light color that you can draw on or some sort of tracing paper. You don't want to use stiff stuff. There is pattern tracing paper or Swedish tracing paper, but just plain white cotton fabric will work fine. All right, so you can see that I chose the water erasable quilters marker. Um, this is because I have a cloth mannequin, so I can just spritz it with a little water to make it go away. I'm actually writing down the client's measurements just so I can have a comparison between her and the dress form as I'm working on it and what changes I need to make during flat patterning. You can also see in the background, I have a photo example from her of a corset where she really liked how the bottom was and the cinch of it. So I'll put a link in the description so you guys can see where that original corset is from. So this part is where really you can make the corset pattern your own. You can change the neckline, you can change the bottom curve, you can add as many panels as you want. So this is really what the drafting gives you control over, is changing the corset pattern to be your own. So this is the part to be really creative. Here you can see those fashion corsets I was talking about that the client sent me. I'm using those to mark the neckline since she really likes how that falls on her. I'm also using the waist as a frame of reference to make sure that I'm getting the right length on her. So this is good since I know how these fit her since she sent pictures. I can really use these as a frame of reference. So you can do the same thing if you have a corset you know how it fits well. You can use it as measuring the how far you want the bottom to sit, how tall you want it. You can also do this, of course, with the measuring tape. Like if you sit, measure, you know, from your waist to where it's comfortable to sit, all that stuff. I could go in more depth about how you measure for a corset, but I'm hoping if you're watching this video that you've either already measured for a corset or made a corset before. Put a comment below if you want me to do a video on how to measure for an in-depth custom corset, and I will do that video in a later tutorial. Okay, I sped this up a little bit. Now you can see that I'm making the seam lines. So these are going to be the lines in between each panel of the corset. This is also where you're going to determine how many panels in a corset you want. Now, if you want a lot more curve to control a lot more kind of 
breezy things going on, more panels is going to give you a lot more control. But in the construction process, it can be a lot easier to mess up. So less panels, a lot easier, but not quite as much control over the shape and the dramatic look of it. Um, more panels means more complicated. So this corset, I've done a six panel corset. Now when you do a corset, you would times that by two. So that would mean I would be doing a 12 panel corset unless I have the front without a frontal closure like a busk or a zipper, then it's gonna be 11 panels because the front is gonna be one panel and not divided into two. You can see here I went back and added some style tape. I only did this to one seam and I'm not actually sure why since I'm using Swedish tracing paper and I can definitely see the washable marker through it. But this is an example of what the styling tape looks like um, instead of the marker so you can kind of see which option will work better for you. I chose to use Swedish tracing paper. I use this a lot because there's a lot of advantages over muslin or a plain cotton fabric. Um, one of them is that you don't have a grain in Swedish tracing paper. Why this is important, uh, when you are drafting with a muslin, you always need to make sure the grain line of your fabric is parallel with your center back or your center front. Otherwise, the corset pieces can be super skewed. When you try to transfer it to flat patterning, they can get really messed up. So. This is one big advantage of Swedish tracing paper that isn't a problem, so it's not something that you have to think of or consider when laying out your pieces to trace them. Now, another thing that's really nice is it's pretty sheer, so it's really easy to see marking lines or styling tape lines through it. I'll put a link for Swedish tracing paper in the description. I get it from a company called Wawak. They're great for supplies, and I really like using them for that. Okay, so now you're gonna see, I'm gonna pin it a lot just to really make sure it's nice and clean and flush against the mannequin. This is important with the corset because unlike a lot of clothing drafting, you have a lot of negative ease. So you really want it to just be right against the body. Um, I'm also going to be snipping along the seam lines to really make sure that it just falls in the curves really nicely. If you don't trim it along the seam lines and cut it in, it's not going to fall nicely and you're not going to get that nice curved shape that you want at the end. One thing while you're snipping, you want to make sure you don't snip too far in. You don't want it to go past your seam line because then you're going to also alter the shape of your pattern when you take it off the mannequin. So just snip it exactly to where your seam line is so that it's helping it go flush but not actually cutting into the physical panel that you're making. Now I'm taking a bright pink marker to mark all of my lines to mark over the waistline, the center front, um, the neckline, notches that I want to do. This is super important. This is how you're going to going to really know what you're looking at later when you transfer it to flat patterning. So make it bright, make it loud, make it easy for you to read and understand it later. Especially if you're somebody that might start this project and start it again later, trust me, you want to know what those markings mean later. Now really the next steps are going to be rinse and repeat. You're going to cut pieces of Swedish tracing paper, pin them on, trim them down, snip along the seam lines, and then again mark with a bright marker, all of your notches, your waistline, your neckline, your bottom. Um, if you need to make any additional notes, um, that's a good time too. I often also put like a uh, number for each panel so then when I'm looking at them later I can know the order they go in. So this is really the time that you just want to be careful about your pinning. Just be really particular, really flush against the mannequin. This is where if you did pat it out or you have a dress form or mannequin that is more close to the measurements you're working with, it makes it easier than transferring later. But again, you're going to make so many alterations in the flat patterning process, you can kind of fudge it later and then really get the fit you want with your mock-up. A couple of things while drafting that I found really helped me is marking the under boob. Um, this is really important later if you want to give a lot of lift to the bust or you want to have a really flush shape over the bust. Now, this silhouette really depends on what you're trying to create. You don't have to go flush under the boob. You can just go straight up if you want a more um, Renaissance Tudor look um, or Marie Antoinette look. But if you want like a more Victorian look that really curves around the boob, you're going to really need to get that under bust line. And that's really important in the mock-up too, since the difference between the waist and the under bust can change for every person. You can take this measurement beforehand, but when you're trying to draft on a mannequin, it's kind of hard to put that in. So I just find it's easier in the mock-up to alter that if you're really trying to get that dramatic lift and that dramatic shape. 
Another thing to watch out for is the underarm. You won't want to go too high so you're jabbing into someone's armpit. You also don't often want to go too low in the back. Um, you can, but just be aware that sometimes that can really, you can get a muffin top over it basically. It can just cut into the back and it's harder to draft for and it doesn't give as much support um, to the bust and all around. But it just depends on what you want to create and experiment with. Um, I don't usually favor lower backs, especially when I'm making corsets for curvy women, because at least personally, I find that you get a lot more muffin top over the back. You don't get as much control, and it's just not as flattering. Another point that you want to make sure that you really note is the panels that are right at that side seam especially if you're going to do a lot of waist reduction, that's where you want to go in the most. And you want to make sure, especially if you have a, like, a lot of panels, that you know where that side seam is. So that's where you're going to cut in the most, so you want to know where that is. Um, another thing as we get to the side, back, and back pieces is when you're doing your style lines, I should have mentioned this before, you're going to leave like a 2 to 4 inch gap in the back, depending how much gap you want. This is going to make it so that you don't have to do as much negative ease when you're doing your flat patterning. So you're already going to plan for that gap in the back that corsets have um, so that you'll be prepared for that. Before I wrap up this tutorial, I just wanted to leave you with some parting thoughts. With this kind of drafting, you can really go crazy. You can put as many panels as you want. You can go deep plunge v-neckline, you can do a scalloped edge, you can do crazy points, you can really do anything that your imagination thinks of. Know whatever you do, the more things you add, it will make it more complicated in the fitting, but this is your chance to explore something that's been in your head and to bring it to reality. Anyway, if you have liked this corset video, please give it a like or comment in below. If there are things that I can improve to make this tutorial easier in the second part, please give me good constructive comments. I would love that. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's given you a little insight in the KMK process and also hopefully have helped you in your own corset adventures. Until next time, I'm Caitlin and bye.